Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. We <coughs> had a great weekend. Um, first, let me thank Fred and 40 Plus for inviting me to, to speak with you today. So the, the next, I guess, 90 minutes or so, we're going to spend some time talking about managing life transitions. So I know, I, I know the mission of 40 Plus is really around how to prepare um, those of us, because <laughs> I'm, I'm included in that, in that category. Um, in terms of successfully determining what our next chapters of our lives and our career lives are going to be. Um, the time I'm going to spend today is, is really talking about um, concepts and approaches and kind of strategies that can be applied to personal as well as professional life. Um, I, myself, have I don't necessarily come in front of you as, oh, I'm the life transition expert. I am showing up today as a person who herself has gone through tons and tons of life transitions and working with people from a professional and, and personal level to kind of navigate those transitions. So I'm also a continuous learner of the information that I'm going to share with you today. And so I want to start out with just sharing a little bit about myself and not my bio that you guys you know, have access to, but a little bit about some of my transitions um, that I've had to deal with. And so there have been several of them, okay? Starting with, I won't go like all the way back to like childhood, but just you know, things that I think we all can kind of relate to. Uh, being a single parent for quite a m many years and sending an only child off to college, okay? And what that felt like when you leave the campus and you feel like you leave part of yourself there, okay? And, and the emotion that, you know, kind of comes from that. And how you need to navigate, well, what's the next chapter of your life going to be when your primary focus has been, you know, raising, you know, that child, okay? And then I had a very successful HR career with an organization for 20 years and got laid off. Now, the last three years I really wasn't happy, so I wasn't really sad. <coughs> Some people said to me when I was notified it looked like they had invited me out for margaritas and I was really not trying to look that happy because I had people that reported to me and I didn't want people to be upset, right? And But, but still a significant transition and because I was over 50, I really had to think about what was the next trajectory for me in terms of my life. Did I really want to go back into a corporate position um, for the next 5, 10, 15 years and have to make that level of commitment? And I chose not to. Okay, and as a result of that, I decided to start my own consulting company. And that's kind of, and so that was five years ago. So significant transition, but having to figure out really what, I, what do I want to do next? And then in the midst of all of this, I recognized that some things were going on with my mom and realized that she has dementia. And we've been living together for quite a number of years. Okay, and so now I have to figure out how I'm gonna transition, how you transition a parent out of your house who is not really feeling that exercise. Okay, and what that's gonna mean for her and what that's gonna mean for me. Next, after I transition her, I have a sister who has ALS. I start traveling to help care for her. She passes, I'm there with her, and now my mom's in hospice. Now, I'm not telling you all this because, you know, I'm just like, oh, we need a poor share. I'm just demonstrating that, you know, when I say I'm a continuous learner <laughs> of the information that I'm sharing with you today, that's, that's true. Because out of each of these exercises, you know, you, I, I, and we really need to take a close look at what is it that we really want to accomplish and be in the next phases of our life? And a lot of times we spend time just doing. Okay, I know I'm a problem solving kind of personality. Somebody calls me with an issue. I'm like, okay, well, you know, you need to do this, this, and this, okay? And so um, I just kind of, you know, wanted to kind of give you a sense about what my, you know, some elements of my story are about. Yeah, let me. Um, and so I, so I shared a little bit about me, okay, and I have information, but I'm also interested in, actually, let's go back. I'm interested in hearing a little bit about you as well. So if we can start, if you could maybe introduce yourself 
and just you know tell me or just share just a little bit about what you might want people to know um, about you at this current time. Can we start with you, Aaron? Sure. I'm Aaron Gershowitz. Um, what? I mean, I'm not sure. Well, you just can share. along the lines of what you're doing. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've gone, over the last few years, gone through a number of also significant life transitions, including I get um, divorce, daughter going to college, mm -hmm. like you said, and also relocating. So I was lived, I lived in New York most of my life. Um, several years ago, the organization I had worked for for over 25 years decided to relocate to the D.C. area. I you know, was offered the opportunity to move and decided because of the other transitions going on in my life, that was a good time to get a new place, um, to be in a new place. And then within two years of my moving, I was let go from oh, that okay. position. And so now I'm here looking for something new in an area where I'm, you know, don't have a lot of connections, don't really know that many people because I'm new here, so that's been a bit of a challenge. So that's so, so what where I am in, in my life. And, you know, I kind of saw it as an opportunity, kind of like you said, I was ready to move on to the next place. Um, but it's been over a year now, and perhaps, it, you know, it's been difficult for me to kind of figure out, you know, what. You know, I thought I wanted one thing, then maybe another, and how to make any of that happen has been a, a challenge for me, as I'm sure for okay. everyone else. Right, exactly. And so in terms of your career and what your what your background or what you think you may be looking for, um, can you share a little bit about Sure, that? I mean, there was part of me at the beginning who thought, oh, this, like you did, oh, let me try to go out on my own. Okay. And, you know, and, and you know, I've ideas and I could again having that flexibility of the, my own business consulting and so on but after some time thinking about that I I'm kind of don't think I'm quite the right personality for that I don't have that kind of hustle sales kind of mm -hmm. need to do mm -hmm. that so then I was back at the oh let me see if I can find something that's similar to what I did before so I'm kind of going back and forth between those things and looking at you know trying to expand but I think I would rather Organization, and I'm interested in doing similar work. I, I like the work that I was doing, and I like the cause that I was working for. So, okay. but maybe broadening it or transforming it in some other ways. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Um, Lauren. Hi. Uh, well, when I w when you were talking, I I thought I could relate to so much of what you went through because I'm I'm also a human resources. Are you? And yes, I also have some certifications and in terms of life events. Parents mm -hmm. who passed away, unfortunately, and uh, I was also kind of in inviting Elena to leave <laughs> my job and okay. retire earlier, and it took me took me by surprise. Um, but I think I'm, I'm over that. I'm now ready. But I've been working there for I would say 20, yeah, 20 years. 15 of which were in human resources. And, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what I want to do next. Okay. Uh, because I thought, oh, I would like to do something different, which I don't know what it could be. Mm -hmm. uh, but at, at the same time, I get, I feel I get pulled into doing something related to human resources because that's where my contacts are, where my experience is. So I'm torn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so natural, so you yeah, might want. Yes, yeah, so I said, why go for something totally new? Because I feel that in this market, in DC, people are very specialized. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go into a certain line of business, you have to like, maybe go to college, get another degree, and mm -hmm. be able to compete with millennials. I don't think that's a good idea. Okay. So um, that's where I am now. So I'm attending different events about career transition. and um, I would like to uh, keep working not only for to stay mentally fit I think because and also because I miss the social part of mm -hmm. the work mm -hmm. uh, I've been taking some leave uh, recently and that's the part that I miss I don't miss my <laughs> previous job because I uh -huh. wasn't I wasn't happy either yeah, yeah. And I think it what makes makes you uh, happy is like the people you work with also besides the work that Thank you. Oh, thank you. All right. And I'm Janine. Janine, that's right. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Janine. I am <laughs> that rarity of 
Washington native. I'm a home girl. I've lived here all my life, and I have done extensive work uh, as administrative assistant, secretarial work, and I finally landed my dream position. Okay. Uh, I was a federal contract worker doing paralegal work in what was the biggest criminal trial in D.C., working for some very prominent criminal defense attorneys. Uh, of course, we all knew that would not last forever. Um, I've been uh, affiliated with most of the big law firms in town, and now I am between career successes. Okay. On my last position at Venerable, I had the privilege of doing a small amount of administrative work for Carl Racine, who at that point was the managing partner of Venerable. And he is now in a newly created position that we DC voters voted him in as the Attorney General of the District of Columbia. And my vision and my dream would be to work in the, his, his office okay. to be an advocate for um, people. Okay, all right, thank you. All right. And, sorry, what is your name? Sergio Abarca. Sergio, oh, you're fine. Okay, so just a little bit about, you know, where you are right now, you're in transition, you know, I, I am not the transition, I'm okay. a financial advisor, and I volunteer here at 40 months. Oh, okay, all right. Kevin, okay. would you want to share anything? Sure. Uh, um, I am 41 years into a career that's been pretty good to me. And uh, to the point now, I'm finding, almost feeling uh, trapped. Like, you know, I just woke up and I want to transition into something um, part-time, you know, close to retirement age. So I want to transition into something part-time, but really it's more like my own business, my own interests. So um, I'm kind of a workaholic. So the thought of not having that um, the job that you up and go to every day is a little intimidating but I have many friends who have started their own businesses and have encouraged me to do the same thing. Um, I just would rather do it on a part-time level. So now I'm trying to gain the skills that I need to do that and transition into a, a lighter workload where I can do more meaningful things instead of just the routine. Thank you. And we have a Hi. Hi. I I was welcome in, so this is my first time here in 19 years. I was here 19 years ago. Oh, okay. I was in transition. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, uh, I, I identify as a publisher's representative, so in my first half of my career, first 18 years, I sell textbooks for one of the major publishing companies, the National Thompson, the Royal Okay. And And um, that, and then paperwork became a burden after my two boys, I have a wife and two boys. And, um, and so it was hard to keep up with the paperwork. So I changed uh, and became, I looked for a local publisher, did the same job for Aspen Publishers for three years, and then, and then now in the last, in the last 18 years, we are working on training in, in customer relations at Uber DNA, but they're just uh, downsized. Uh, okay. Closed, closed the department. Oh, okay. And so I find myself uh, very recently in transition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Training and sales, that's what, that's what, that's what you do. That's your world. And I'm sorry, Tom. Tom. Uh, I'm a software engineer, test engineer in between jobs now. Mm -hmm. uh, previously, I was a software developer, and technology has gone very quickly. I wasn't always keeping up with it, and because of family obligations. Um, so, um, so, so it's been harder to get more permanent jobs. I've been taking like uh, contract jobs from mm -hmm. recruiters. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am. My challenge now is to try to find enough time to train, get the skills, and to, to, and to jump up to you know becoming a more automated system. Thanks. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I'm in the midst of a rather extreme transition. I had to work. I worked for years as a project manager in the IT world. Um, my my job that I had came to an end, actually, almost a couple years, almost two years ago now. And uh, because I attended one of these sessions that was about franchising, I am now the owner of a franchise. So every direction I look is something new and different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What kind of franchise? It's uh, we work with businesses to help them look for ways to reduce their costs. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'll just uh, say I'm, I'm a volunteer here at Forty Plus, and I'm also in transition myself. I'm a former journalist, and maybe going to do journalism again. But I left that job last October after the company changed hands. Mm -hmm. Working uh, first as a newspaper reporter and then online. Now I'm, I'm looking at maybe using those same communication skills with them at the service of an advocacy group or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay. With the uh, work for change that I believe in. Mm -hmm. Which is very interesting, right? Because we, we because in the, sometimes in the next phases we think about, we, we have certain passions, mm -hmm. okay, but how can we translate those from kind of like that co professional arena to really make an impact? In lives, so that's yeah. I think that's kind of a natural thing. Um, so you guys just kind of shared about. I, I want to. I wanna, oh, I'm sorry. Just throw out my two cents here too. I'm sorry. So, yeah, no problem. I'm hiding the camera. Right. Uh, yeah, my name's Rob, and uh, I'm uh, uh, looking for. Uh, I shouldn't say looking for. I'm in the process of evaluating which way I'm I'm heading here. I when I. Uh, started this process, I thought I was going to be looking for a job mm -hmm. for in an organization. Uh, that may or may not be true. I might be uh, self-employed in a, um, uh, we'll call it sort of like an independent contractor kind of way. What I'm looking for is to transition. I also worked in journalism and television for the past 20 years. What I wanted moving towards is something that's longer format, so longer length product. Yes magazine, video magazine, or documentary length, where you can really get into something, work with a team of people, and, and uh, spend spend a little more time and get a little more reward out of it. So that's what I'm looking for. Thank you. And I can relate very much to the, as, as many people have said also, right. to the uh, uh, Which one? parent with dementia. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, right. There. right. It's very tragic. Exactly. And then, you know, when we get into this age range, it becomes kind of more of a norm that you can really even think about. Um, and so a lot of you have kind, of, kind of shared where you are, and, and, and I think it kind of lines up with the question that I have here, or what I was going to ask you to do is think of a time when you were in a state of satisfaction on the job, in a relationship, all life, and then became disillusioned and, um, and dissatisfied. So some of us already talked about how, even though we weren't happy in our jobs, they probably had to lay us off, we, we stayed longer than we knew we were going to stay. But I wanted you to just think about that a little bit. And I wanted to, to hear what feelings came up for you during that time. In my, in my case, mm -hmm. uh, I had been working on a, a long-term project, mm -hmm. a contract. We, we, we worked this contract for close to 20, the same contract for close to 20 years. And I got to the point where I didn't feel like I was bringing anything new and fresh mm -hmm. to the work. Um, so I, I had uh, I had decided I, I should move on. And, but at that point, we were going through a contract renewal, so, so I'll, I'll stick around and, and uh, or a contract rebidding for the contract. So I so I'll stick around with, with the goals and, and, and bid process. And it turns out we we lost mm -hmm. the contract. And at that point, I felt relieved. <laughs> this is the feeling that came. It was, it was really, oh, okay. It's you know, I don't, I don't have to take any action. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm yeah, gonna you were released. I'm going to be transitioning yeah. out of this. Uh, right, so. you were released, and you didn't have to deal with the guilt. Yes, right. Um, of leaving them hanging. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's how. So yeah, so for you, that worked out. Right, right, exactly. Anyone else in terms of what feeling came up for you? during a situation in which you became disillusioned or dissatisfied? Right. Yeah, when I left the last job, it was because um, the company changed hands and instead of news, uh, they wanted marketing material. So I knew I had to leave 
um, because I was, it was just antithetical to what I wanted to do. But the feelings that that came up, I felt like, oh, I shouldn't quit. I should, you know, change their mind. I should fight this more. Uh, and I was uh, also afraid that this is, you know, what I, I don't have another job. I never left a job that I had. I never lined up. Mm -hmm. So um, that was fear. Yeah, it was fear. And yeah, and sometimes a sense of freedom too, thinking that why well, I, I could, you know, I don't, I'm not paycheck to paycheck. I'm, yeah. I don't know how to put it, but I have a little bit of cushion yeah. at the time. Yeah. And I could do some things that I wanted to do for a while and I had to put it off. So, kind of, so there was a, besides the fear, there was a feeling of uh, uh, excitement. Mm -hmm. And also a little bit of maybe anxiety about what was going on where it wasn't lining up with what where the direction they were going and, and what you were feeling um, yeah. or committed to your values. Yeah. So there was a little anxiety around that. Oh, very much so. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yes, I didn't mention uh, <laughs> this, but my primary employer was a small law firm who went out of business after I had been employed there for 21 years, and essentially they all lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. I was age 50 at that point. I felt a lot of fear, which was exacerbated when I started making the ubiquitous secretarial rounds of mm -hmm. going to employment agencies. Yeah. I'll never forget, I was told by one of the recruiters at one of the secretarial agencies, she said, oh, you think it's impressive that you have 21 years of experience mm -hmm. in the same law firm being employed from 1989 to the year 2000. Mm -hmm. She said, I have news for you. Your resume would look a lot better if you had four or five jobs during that 21 year period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I'm sure is not an unusual thing that people have either heard or if you're in human resources. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I know in the, in the organization I used to work in, when it was taken over, a lot of us didn't want folks to even, we didn't even talk about how long we've been with the company. And that me with a feeling of I was in another world. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. The century had changed. Yeah. So fear and a little kind of disconnected in terms of you know, what's going on currently, or in, in terms of how people perceive it. Mm -hmm. Ira? Yeah, I'll, I'll just say that in looking at your question, the way it's written, mm -hmm. I, I find two things happening in those times when I would go from a feeling of positiveness to less positive. Yeah. Um, one, it has to do with my experience of the organization, but simultaneously with myself. Yeah. More questions about am I doing, you know, am I behaving as effective as I can for the company or the situation. At the same time, it's feeling not as positive as I might have liked about the organization. So the, the feelings are a little confused. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And I asked the question about <laughs> what feelings come up because a lot of times we get into again um, the safe space in terms of not really dealing with how we're feeling, but we spend more time in the action. Okay. And so and then and then a lot of times how we're feeling manifests itself in a lot of different ways. You know we you know, how we may be engaging with our family members, how we may be showing up in space, because we really haven't really focused on and, and, and been honest with ourselves about how we might be feeling about what, what, what's going on. So that's kind of why I, um, I, I phrase it this way. So, so one of the things that I, I want to talk about, which is a common feeling, and, it, and it, I think it could be all-encompassing, right? There's always going to be a certain level of anxiety when we're talking about the transition. Okay, so if we're talking about fear, you know, feeling um, disconnected, whatever. Ultimately, in, in my mind, anxiety is kind of like this, um, this umbrella where a lot of those can fall under. And, you know, it's natural and normal, but what I want to, what I want to encourage us to think about is that, if, in fact, it's an opportunity for growth. Okay, because if we deny it, um, then it, it's hard for us to kind of move forward. 
So it's important to kind of think about it in terms of, I know I'm uncomfortable and I know I'm feeling a certain level of anxiety, okay? But it, but it truly is an opportunity if we can get our heads around that, okay? And it does provide us a certain level of power and focus. I know a lot of times I, I had a really good leader and mentor and she would call me in the room and she wanted me to take on a new assignment, but what would she call it? An opportunity. You know, and it, and it really did frame my thinking in terms of, okay, well, first of all, the person thinks I'm the right person for the job. Because a lot of times we have our own insecurities, okay, which stop us from starting our businesses, from leaving a relationship, from looking, you know, for the job that we want, whatever, whatever that is, right? And we, and we really don't push ourselves um, past the uncomfortableness of the anxiety. Okay, so I just want us to kind of think about it from that, um, from that perspective. Okay, growth often is going to mean a transition. Okay, so it's going to be the ending of something. And there's always going to be a period of confusion. Okay, not knowing what's going to be next. Okay, and the, and, the, and the trick here is really the ability to let go, okay, and allow ourselves to go through a certain process around that, because that's the only way that we're going to get to the new thing, whatever that is, whatever that new beginning is. And this, this whole process of renewal in terms of, okay, you know, breaking down, it's, it's kind of like, you know, this isn't necessarily maybe the best um, <laughs> example of getting divorced, okay, which I've had the pleasure of doing that too. Okay, I mean, it's a breakdown, right? And so, and, and so you can't, I mean, you, you, you can stay in bed for six months if you choose to, but a lot of times we don't have that option, okay? We, we have kids we have to raise, we have jobs we have to show up to, okay? And we have to find the fortitude to move forward and decide what is it going to look like for us next, okay? And that, could, and that can apply to all different kinds of transitions that we're going to face in life. And so I'm going to talk about today um, a particular model, okay, around managing life transitions. And this is really about engaging in a cycle of, of renewal, okay, which is as you see here, the reverse of you know us being burned out. We're in these jobs, potentially. We're in these jobs. We're in these relationships. We're in these situations. Okay, where we know it's not aligned with our values. We know we're not feeling good about it. We know that we're disillusioned about it. Okay, and or we're just frankly <coughs> burned out emotionally, physically. We're just burned out. And so when we talk about a cycle of renew, it's really being intentional and deliberate, okay, about finding out what it is that we want to achieve that aligns with our values. And you guys probably have had these kind of conversations before. Because typically what happens is when we are not aligned with our values, we tend to get into situations where we're not happy and we're not fulfilled. So we're going to have a little bit more detailed conversations about, about values. Okay, so I'm going to, in a minute, talk to you about this particular cycle. I'm going to show you a graphic around the um, cycle of renewal. But the idea is that to recognize the cycle we're in in our lives, to recognize what that is, and then the fact that we need to be acting appropriately in the particular cycle to be able to reposition where we want to be. Um, there are also are particular actions or activities that naturally kind of align us with each of these particular cycles that I'm, that, that I'm going to talk about. Um, and so usually, like I said, when something is going on inside of us as well as outside of us, um, we typically have situations where there are complete disconnects if we're not paying attention to it. So here's a model, and there's many, okay? The cycle of change and renewal. And this is from uh, 
Frederick Hudson and Pamela McLean, McLean's book, Life Launch, A Passionate Guide to the Rest of Our Lives. And as you see here, there are four different areas related to this particular cycle. And at the top you see life chapters, and at the bottom you see life transitions. When we're looking at the first cycle, which is go for it, this is considered to be a period of stability. So in a world that is working for us right now, so we're good. We like where we are, whatever that is, job, relationship, whatever. We, we, we like where we are, we feel fulfilled, we feel like there's some level of growth, you know, that is going on. So we're so so we're pre so we're pretty good, and we're in, you know, we're in that cycle. The second cycle is focused around what they call the doldrums, period of dis detachment and restlessness. That question we tend to ask ourselves: Okay, so is this it? <laughs> now you could say it's a midlife crisis or something like that. that's just an example, right? But is this it? Okay, and so we start to feel um, a little detached here, not necessarily as, as, as happy. Maybe our goals are not, we're not uh, meeting the goals and achieving what we thought we wanted to achieve here. And I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail about each of these particular stages. Um, this kind of starts to lead us into the third cycle here in terms of what is referred to as cocooning. Okay, so we come to terms with ourselves. So we're asking, is this all that there is? Okay, which should drive us into an, an exploration of ourselves, a self-reflection to determine, okay, where do I really want to be going next? What do I really want to be doing? Not what I should be doing or what somebody else says I should be doing. Okay. It takes courage to make this shift. And some of us don't. We wait until, you know, you're with a company for 20 years and they lay you off and then you decide, oh, do I really want to be doing this? No. <laughs> you know? And that's okay. You know? Um, and so that, that's what this particular uh, part of the cycle is. And then once you actually do the work of the self-reflection, you know, the meditation, figuring out what, what, your, what your values are, how you got misaligned in your values, you know, you start to think about, well, what is, it gonna, what, what is the exit plan going to be, okay, from cocooning to getting ready. Okay, so here, wherever, whatever your forward idea is, a motivation or your passion is, now you want to kind of test it out. Okay, and see, am I really, is this really going to fulfill and realign my values? And the next phase of what it is that I want to get accomplished here. And then, so you see here it says renewed sense of purpose. And then you really shift back up to the period of stability, you know, after that. And so the first and second cycles are really kind of like our comfort zone, okay, because, and, and go for it, we're good. So when our comfort zone, everything's good. But in cycle two, our comfort zone is, I really need this paycheck. You know, I have to, I have these kids in college. Um, you know, I I I know that I that I really should be thinking about this business, but I'm not really I I I, I don't know where to start. Okay, and so we're in so both are comfort zones, but just a little different. And then the 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 third and fourth cycle are really focused around the reflection and the exploration, okay, and, and forcing ourselves to come out of our comfort zones to really think about what is it that's really, that we really need to be doing next, okay? Any um, questions or comments about, about that, initial thoughts about that?
just check and see if there's anything else key I wanted to tell you here. I like what you uh, said about getting out of my comfort zone. Uh, I think uh, for myself that's a diplomatic way of saying I'm actually afraid. Yeah. Getting out of my fear. Mm -hmm. And also too, when we talk, when when in the phases, the the two and three cycles here, this is where transformation starts to happen. So the things that we typically believed. Um, our attitudes, the um, you know the structures that we may have been operating in are no longer working. They don't no, they they don't feel right for us anymore. But this is natural. I mean, I'm sure none of us are the same as we were in our 20s or our 30s. Or, I mean, this is just natural way of life. Okay, and now you know we're all in our 50s or above and we're looking at the next trajectory of our lives and we're trying to figure out, okay, what really fits for me now? Your values are gonna shift. Okay, this is all kind of natural. It may not feel great. <laughs> okay? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. I'm sorry, what's your name? Carrie. Carrie, okay. So, do they address at all how things don't go one, two, three, four? Like you go into two, or you may stay yeah. in two, yeah. and then you may go, end up going back to one, or you go to three, and I mean, like, what, what are the processes for if you don't manage to go through the whole life cycle and you get stuck mm -hmm. in one of them? Right, exactly. And so that's where the whole series of questions, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit, um, because from, so, so so I'm a coach as well, right? And we ask a lot of questions, right? And so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna provide you kind of like the quick reference, like if we were in a coaching session and the questions that you should be asking yourself. But it's always a reevaluation, okay? And so this doesn't necessarily, we, we do get stuck, okay? But, but why are you stuck? Okay, so so there's always a reason why things are happening, and that's part of the, the work, okay, is being honest with yourself about that, and not having the, the list of excuses about what it is. Well, they didn't call me back, you know, or, um, you know, my, my, my wife says I can't really do that right now. I still have to get my kids through college. I mean, all valid, okay? I, I actually had an experience where I, I had a client I was coaching who was having trouble moving to the next level, okay? It was a director level, he wanted to be a vice president, okay? But in our conversations, there were all these things about why he couldn't do it, whether it was, was it gonna require more, more traveling, was it gonna take time away from his family? You know, they wanted him to operate. His, his manager used to tell him all the time, you need to own your numbers and be able to, 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 to present your numbers because that's what the manager cared about. But he would tell me he's not a numbers guy. You know, that's not his strength. Well, do you want the promotion or don't you want the promotion? Okay, but after we spent about six months together, I got an email one day that says I got promoted. You know, so it was just a matter of just pushing him a little bit to really look at <coughs> the, the list of why this wasn't happening for him. And also how he was showing up as well. You know, so all those things are important in terms of really having to do the work. Does that, a little bit, does that answer your question a little bit? I'm gonna keep waiting. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, so, I have a question before you go uh -huh. on. Um, is it, it seems like often uh, this, a uh, few renewals will happen at one time, like I think Erin alluded to um, uh, changing your location where you live, maybe your relationship and the job. If that all happens at once, is, like, is that like the wrong way to do it? Is that too much? You can have a choice. It, it, yeah, <laughs> well, or maybe it's easier if somebody has well, the freedom of, you know. Well, I, well I, think it's, I think it depends on the person and the yeah. situation too, in terms of uh, in terms of what you feel you can personally manage, okay. And a lot of times it, that those things may happen, 
but maybe you only need to focus on one or two priorities related to something. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you move to an area and a new job, you might not necessarily go right out and buy a house. Right. You know, you, you have to decide, okay, I'm going to rent for a minute. Yeah. You See know? Yeah. And, and I don't know if anyone else has any um, reactions as well. I, yes. yeah, I would say it's both. Mm -hmm. Easier and harder. Yeah. Um, sometimes <laughs> yeah. you don't I have a choice. That. And I think, like you said, so also you try to, you try maybe to sequence how you deal with them. Like, right. you know, okay, now I'm going to focus on relationships and leave the job thing. But sometimes you don't have a choice. And they all happen around the same time and yeah that's hard but yeah. it also maybe creates more opportunities i don't know how to answer that. Mm -hmm. i mean so yeah. i would say I, I would i would agree it's just a matter of if you can sequence things maybe it's good to do but maybe not maybe you just want to just throw everything out and start over again so right there, there's something liberating about that yeah. as well yeah. Yeah. Um, but also very scary so yeah yeah. And the idea of the models really are to, to, uh, to provide you some kind of framework of thinking. Okay, it's not necessarily, you know, complete science and things of that nature, but it, it really does give you um, a framework for reflection. So I'm actually going to just spend a little bit of time just talking about each of the cycles in terms of the condition and, and what you might be experiencing um, so that you can be. May, maybe have a little bit more clarity about where you might be sitting. So let's just start with the first one, just in terms of the go, the go forward. So again, individuals in this particular stage, you can see here that these are the kinds of things that they may be experiencing as they're in this particular stage. And they also will continue, you know, they, they probably are, are really into kind of uh, training and continuing to build up their particular skills, they're kind of good at managing you know, their, 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 their time, they are highly engaged, whether it's at work or personally, okay, and they have a, and they feel that they have a plan and a vision that is still active and working for them. This is like, this is where you want to end the project. Yes, <laughs> right, yeah. exactly, exactly, so no, either no, you're no. here now, oh, yeah. either you're there now, okay, or you got, you know, you're working towards it, this is what you want to, you know, work towards those particular kinds of, of feelings, okay, a lot of times, you know, we shouldn't really be suffering as individuals, you know, we should be seeking some kind of fulfillment and, you know, um, but, it, you know, life happens. The second cycle, the doldrums cycle, the, you know, is this, is this all there is? Typically, what we're experiencing is that misalignment that I had mentioned, okay? How many times have we been in an organization and they shift and we, we no longer feel like it aligns with our values? You know, and it's painful to get up and go to work every day. Okay, that's just, that's just an example of that. So this should start those feelings, and I focus a lot on, you know, the feelings aspect of it is the wake-up call, okay, that it's time for, for a particular change. And so these are some of the feelings that we typically would experience, and there can be all other kinds of lists, right? But what needs to happen here intentionally and deliberately and so what's the exit plan? What's the plan? Now when I say mini or life plan, there was a line in, in, in the middle of the, um, the, the graphic that said, um, I think it said mini transition. Mini transition is, I, I decide I just need to move to another city or I need to get a degree. You know, those little things that happen along our journey that we just decide that we're gonna do you know, versus a significant, you know, life kind of changing, um, I'm going to start a company, I'm going to start, start a business, okay, so whatever, whatever that feeling is and that, and, that, and that plan is, and again, how are we going to get back in line with whatever our values are and find our direction? We may have to engage in, and you talked about this time, in terms of engaging in, you know, additional training. We may decide that we want to consider an engaged coach. 
therapy is useful as well. I'm an, av I'm an, I'm an advocate of that. Because a lot of times we don't know what to do with all these feelings that we're having. Okay? And how they may be affecting our relationships, our marriages, whatever the circumstances are. And this is actually a good time to start to renew and build and expand your network. When I first um, transitioned out of corporate and decided I wanted to start my new business, what I did was I started to reach out to, um, to folks that actually were doing the same thing that I w wanted to do. Okay, and just having conversations about what does it mean? What was your journey? Because people love to talk about themselves. As long as you don't call somebody and say, I'm looking for a job, because everybody doesn't have a job. The minute you say that, it shuts down the conversation because they already know they can't help you, right? And so one of the things that I tell people to do is connect with people, okay, and just say you want to just talk about the journey that you're taking and you want to hear a little bit about, you know, what their journey was and any advice they might be able to give you. People, and, and I had strangers say yes and gave me 30 minutes and I had conversations. Huh. Were these people you knew? or No. Nope. Some of them I didn't know. Some of them were referrals, you know, because after 20 years, um, I, I did have a network, especially some executives that I had worked with, okay? And so I did contact some of them and they put me in touch. But I actually reached out to a couple people on LinkedIn. And they said yes. And I went in and had conversations with them and picked their brains, um, you know, about what their journey was like. And what could I expect? Um, and, and, and where are the other folks that they thought that I should talk to? And what that helped with was later, I got calls back. If they wanted to connect me with someone or they had an opportunity, you never know where that kind of um, connection is, is, is going to get you. Okay, so during this time when you're feeling like oh, something's off, you know, and I need to figure it out. You don't have to go out and just quit your job that day or whatever the circumstances are. Um, you know, but plan. Have some planning about it and start to make some connections with individuals. Okay, and so we don't like where we are, cycle two. <laughs> We're feeling some angst there. And so now it's, okay, what are we going to do to figure it out, come into terms with where we are, okay? And what this feels like is the need for a, a real separation in terms of where we are, okay, and where we wanna get to. And so in this particular space is where the work is really done. Okay, we're exploring, you know, exploring where we are, what the issues, what we think the issues are. You know, we can have these kind of feelings in terms of loneliness. Somebody had also said relief earlier. Um, and it's about reconstruction. So we may seek to do training in a new area. You know, you, you want to start a business, you have a passion, and you decide I'm gonna, you're going to take a certification class like in videography or something like that because you believe that that's kind of what your your next phase is gonna be. Okay, so you start, you start that planning and starting to connect with individuals around that. You know, I'm, I'm a big advocate you know, of, of kind of journaling and being able to just do a whole lot of that inner reflection um, as well. So this is about I the found, work. I found it helpful to take the Myers-Briggs test mm -hmm. and other uh, tests to see where my abilities uh, were and also very often when you take that sort of a test it gives you potential career opportunities and uh, uh, job titles to consider going into. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's absolutely true as well. Um, you know, there's all kinds of ways. One, one of the things that I've learned for myself starting a business is, you know, I have colleagues that also are business owners. We operate in similar space, even though we may provide different levels of services, but we operate in kind of the HR, you know, leadership development kind of space. And some of them 
really love being up front and doing keynote speakers, spe speeches, or they really are the social media and they're all over the place, right, in social media. And what I had to learn was everything's not for everybody. Okay, so that's part of the self-reflection too. You can't, you know, Iris' journey is not my journey. Okay, because a lot of times what we also do is we compare ourselves. You know, we try to follow a certain path. Okay, and it doesn't align with who I am naturally. Okay, so I think that's an important thing to really take into consideration too. We are trying to figure out what's going to be next, you know, for you, and being comfortable with that. Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions or comments? So we've kind of figured out, or we, we think, we have a sense of what's next. Okay, so now we wanna, we, we wanna really try to get out of that whole cocooning and, and, and try to get to that, um, you know, go for it. And so here we're really trying to focus on what our vision is for ourselves. And what's important here is Again, being true to yourself. These came back from a search. And so whatever it is that we think we're doing is we're gonna test the waters a little bit, right? And so you decide you wanna start that particular business, you take a certification class in it, you start to make some contacts related to it, and you, and you take on opportunities to practice and to really get a sense of whether or not this is really for me. I had a person, when I, one of the persons that I talked to when I transitioned out, the networking person, we, we hit it off really well, but she told me, come back to her in six months um, to kind of decide whether or not we were gonna do some work together. Because she needed to make sure that I was hungry enough for it, that I was serious about the fact that I wanted to really start a consulting company. Okay, because it's not, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> okay, and that's what she told me, and I, and I took, you, and you know, and I respected that. Okay, so she was basically telling me, go test the waters and come back and tell me how you like it, and if it's working for you. Okay, so that's an example of, you know, what I was doing in this particular, in this particular stage. And then, of course, you know, we're going to be all excited about it and enthusiasm and. You know, we have to, you know, get out there and take the risks re related to it. But at the end of the day, we're just trying to figure out really kind of, okay, what is going to be my sense of purpose in this stage in my life? And it may not be, you know, photojournalism with an organization, you know, with a corporate organization now. It really could be, you know, I, I, I now want to connect myself with a nonprofit that I really feel is you know, is serving the community the way that I want to really be spending my life. And what are the sacrifices that I'm going to have to make to do that? So, where are you in the cycle? I think I'm in number three. You think you're in number three? Yeah. Okay. You want to anything about why you think you're number three? I could relate to um, more to the description of the cocooning stage. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I passed uh, the doldrums mm -hmm. and I'm really, I'm looking forward to getting ready to test the waters. Okay. But I still have to define what, what it means. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, um, I was curious about when you mentioned that when you tested the waters in terms of consulting, how, how did you do it? Because consulting is kind of broad. Yeah. I don't know what area you yeah. focused more. Well, what I did was, I, when I said, I, like for instance, the LinkedIn folks, yeah. I really just looked for folks that, that I believed were doing the same type of work that I wanted to do. Because mm -hmm. although my background is HR and I'm a generalist and I've done everything well except benefits because I don't really, that's not my thing. Mm -hmm. um, my my, my um, 
My passion is more around HR strategy, leadership development, organizational development, kinds of consulting work. So I kind of narrowed down who was doing the type of work that I wanted to do and, and sought out those people. Okay? Yeah. Anybody else about where you think you are, Aaron? So I'm say also in the cocooning, but for me, I feel like I'm kind of stuck there. It's almost like an aborted cocooning. It's like I don't, you know. So, so yes, I'm trying to be exploring this, but it maybe the fear, or the the you know the the doubts keep creeping up. So I'm like, well, I'm exploring this, but that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And so then I would retreat into the. I don't know, more of the doldrums phase, kind of, so like what the gentleman in the back was saying, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily, I mean, linear isn't the right word, yes. it's not necessarily it's circular, circular. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's not necessarily, you can slide back mm -hmm. into one, or you can try to jump over, so like, I don't like the transition parts at all, mm -hmm. so I managed my life between one and two most of the time, and I would be like, okay, yeah. so I'm getting in the doldrums, so let me find an easy out, which each time turned out to be finding another position in the same organization. Mm -hmm. So I never really needed to do that deep, deep free, and a couple times when I did, I put my toe in the water and said, I really don't like it, I'm gonna stick it out in the doldrums until I can get back to number one. Right. So for me, the challenge this time has been, I haven't had that luxury or that crutch maybe is a better word for it. So I'm really stuck in this number three and don't even know how to get to number four. Like how do I identify, okay, this is what I really want to do and now I'm going to make it happen. And so it's like, well, I think it's what I want to do, but oh, that's really hard and it's really scary. So maybe it's not what I wanted. So that's... Yeah, so the exploration is around really why, why you're stuck. Right. Okay. So and I went to a therapist. And uh, only, okay. And the therapist said, it doesn't matter why you're stuck, just get through it. So she wasn't very helpful with Yeah, that. right. Because I was like, I really want to explore no, why I'm right, stuck. Right. She's like, why are you wasting exactly. your time with Because, that? right. And so, yeah, so there should be follow on questions exactly. around. Yeah. Like, Don't waste your time. What is that? It yeah. doesn't matter what. Yeah, what exactly is it that, that right. you're afraid of? Yeah, what, I mean, you know, and, and it gets to, yeah, the simple thing of, how about we write it down? Yeah. So. How, how about we make it real? So that, you know, because a lot of times when we when we do that, we spend the time to make it real, we figure out that, oh, maybe it's not necessarily as daunting, or I could pick one or two things that I can focus on and then not try to focus on a hundred things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? <coughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. There was, there was something that this... Uh, lady who's sitting here mm -hmm. said that resonated with me and she said um, the Myers, she did the Myers-Briggs type indicator. Yes. You know, I did that a long time ago and then realized that it's, it, it could help but actually do it again because your preferences really can change. Yes. But <laughs> I was stuck between three and four and I feel like I'm moving a little bit more into four, mm -hmm. but um, specifically what I wanted to say was, I knew I had to get back in the classroom. Mm -hmm. and my, my preferences as a person who is introverted, initially I was thinking, I don't want to get in the classroom. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't want to do this. I'd rather, I'd rather do it in a web-based environment or something, because you can do training all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. You can do college all kinds of ways. But I took one step and said, I'm going to the campus. And I got hooked. And when I found out what the benefit for me, even though I still feel like somewhat intro introverted person, the benefit for me was that I think I learned as much from my classmates as I did from my professors. Mm -hmm. And not only that, out of that came some networking opportunities. People were saying, we have a lot of talent here. You know, we can go off and do a, a couple of projects together. That really worked well for me. So I kind of feel like I'm transitioning into four, you know, getting a little bit closer to launch. Okay, thank you. And I know you wanted to add something. Did you want to add something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Let's see if this will, I, I, 
I'll make an effort at this. Okay. Uh, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm in two and three with flashes of four. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's what I was saying. It, 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 right. Right. It's it, not absolutely. I like the fact that it's cyclical, but, yeah. it, but I definitely don't <laughs> follow uh, right. know, in, in the numerical format. Yeah, but I, I I think there's 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 been flashes of four in the last two weeks, okay. but only because of, I hit three. Yeah, and it's interesting because we spend a lot of time. I I think just in our personal and professional lives, probably in the two and threes. Okay, and so what becomes important is what do we need to deliberately be doing and intentionally be doing to kind of help ourselves move through the transitions to what it is that we want to do. And so for the time that we have left, I'm going to talk about that um, a little bit. And I'm going to start with, um, and like I said, this is like the quick, this is like the quick, you know, coaching 101 because the, the kinds of questions, when I talk about reflection, okay, and being honest with yourself, um, it, these are the kinds of things that I'm talking about and talking about what you know about yourself and what you feel okay and if you can't see them I just will read them um, um, quickly so you know are you in a transition we already talked about that what's still working for you what's not working for you anymore the phase that you're in that we just talked about how you're feeling in that phase what changes inside and around you have led to you being in the phase that you're in okay who are you in the season in your life as we change who are you what's important to you how are you showing up okay who are you no longer because sometimes we're operating in a space that is oh, well, this isn't even fair. I, I, I I feel I'm having an out a body experience here. <laughs> okay, I don't belong. I don't belong here anymore. Whether it's a physical place, you know, an emotional place, I don't belong here. I don't want to be here anymore. Are you referring to the job? It could be a job. It could be a relationship. It could be, okay. you know, whatever, whatever it is. And what matters to you most now? And that's gonna change, right? Gosh, I mean, you know what, when we when we got out of college and got our first job and was moving up into the ranks of whatever we were doing, um, you know, that was important to us now, then. Now it's, we're looking at dealing with our parents, you know, um, transitioning, you know, kids out, what are we going to do with the rest of our lives? I mean, you know, we're in different phases now. And what do we want to create? What do you want to create for your life now? Okay, because we, I mean, I, I, I love being an entrepreneur. I'm committed to not going back into corporate. I'm committed to that. Okay? So I'm doing everything that I can to make that happen which is actually challenging because I'm the primary person responsible for my mother financially. Okay? Has, has that come up yet? I'm sorry, I'll what? Tell you about caretaking for parents. Well, I brought it up in my introduction you because- okay, I'll come back. Yeah, because I was, because I was, when I, no, when I was explaining one of my transitions. Okay, so I can easily say, and I do it every year. Okay, I do it every year. I'm thinking, Sherry, are you crazy? Lord, am I doing the right thing? Okay, <laughs> every year I do this. Okay, I even went as far as to interview for a job. And it took them so long to make up their mind, by the time that they got back to me, I had already made up my mind, I don't want this damn job. <laughs> I never wanted it. You know, I was just doing it because I thought it was the responsible thing for me to do. Okay, so yeah, am I working twice as hard and hustling and everything else I'm doing? Because I'm committed that at this stage in my life, I'm not going back into a corporate job. I, I, you know, so that's my motivation. Um, but, uh, okay, so, so what are the changes you're willing to make, and I just kind of, you know, gave my own example of that, right? T 
to align your life around you know these these particular questions. Okay, and this is I mean this could be some deep stuff. <laughs> you know, for for people individually. So, but I'm gonna. The questions and that reflection is extremely important. The other thing that is so important that I think you guys have probably had other conversations around is checking what our values are, okay, and, re and, and reassessing what those are because that really does drive what we do and what we care about, <coughs> okay? What are the things that are important to us Okay, it, it drives and influences our priorities and our ability to make sure that we, uh, that, that we stay connected with our priorities. Okay, and it, and it helps us measure, out, measure you know, whether we're, whether we're on track or not. So when the things that we do and the way that we behave match our values, more likely there's a level of satisfaction and contentment. When they don't, is where we start to feel that level of angst. And so, it's easy for me to say, okay, check your values, what are, you, what are your values, okay? Here are mine. So actually, and I, have a, and I have a handout here for you with a list of values. This is an exercise that I actually did for, for, for myself as I was preparing to talk to you today. Okay. Uh huh. And because we think we know what our values are. Okay. And this list here is a huge list. What we what you want to really try to do is kind of narrow them down to five or six or something like that, which can be hard. You have twenty five. Yeah, I have, but I highlighted seven. Oh, the other oh, highlighted one. Yeah, I started with a list of probably. Well, I don't know how many is up here, but I started with a longer list. Okay, and so the exercise really is to, to identify the things that really resonate with you now, okay? And then kind of start to, start to kind of narrow that down. So I came up with, I wound up highlighting with five of them here, accountability, authenticity, balance, competence, Gratitude, humility, integrity, service. Okay, I'm a bit, you know, I'm a missionary at heart. Service, I, all of that, that's important to me. These are the things that are going to let you know first, what kind of culture are you looking for in an organization that you go to join? Is the organization you're currently in aligned with your values? When you have to make a choice about something, when people are bringing stuff to you, okay, does it align with your values? And I think we're all at an age now where we can make some decisions about what it is we want to do and what we don't want to do. <laughs> okay? But I just kind of found for myself, even this um, exercise was useful because some of the issues I had in my previous organization became about authenticity, integrity, um, you know, people, uh, leader, okay, my, and this is my perspective, right, being in human resources for over 25 years, people don't really want to lead anymore. You know, it's about bottom line, because I was, of course, in an organization, you know, it was profit, a for-profit organization, you know, so for me, you know, it became difficult um, you know, to operate in some space where people weren't important anymore, or I felt weren't the priority. And I'm in human resources, people, that's what I do, right? And I'm gonna say all organizations are like that, but the organization that I was associated with seemed to have lost that, okay? And so for me, I struggled with that. So when I, so when I looked at this, this list that I came up with, it didn't surprise me in terms of why I've made some of the choices that I've made, or what I'm looking for as I move forward. 
What's also important is that you define what these mean to you. Because then you're going to know when you see them, when you feel them. Okay, so that's also important as well. Any questions or comments about that? I'd like to check my notes to make sure I didn't miss anything I want to tell you. And the other reason why it's important to define what they mean um, is because it helps you also to prioritize. Because what happens is we wind up doing things that we think we should be doing or what other people think that we should be doing. And then it doesn't leave enough time for us to do the things that we really want to do and that we care about. That's why the definition part of it is so important. Yes? I like very much what you said about defining uh, these uh, as a person who was in a profession, which certainly like to define its terms. Uh, definitions are very important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at some of these and Number 45, helpfulness, um, reminds me of the need for emotional balance here. I tend to be the kind of person who can be overly helpful to, and become more codependent in hmm. my relations with other people. Okay. So okay. I have to check some of yeah. these as being useful if applied appropriate. Right, yeah. And what you'll see is, you, because you see, I, I have my top, what, five, seven highlighted, but there's more up here. So the other thing's important to me. Okay, but if I had to narrow down, you know, how I want to make choices and engage with people and what I want to put up with and all that kind of stuff, you know, I just, I, I too was just trying to, you know, stay true to the exercise. So I just wanted to, you know, share share that with you. Um, the last thing is okay. So you have the values. We, you know, that's core. That's foundation. And foundational, because that's going to drive the decisions that you're going to make. The last thing I want to um, talk about is really about we have our values. Now, how do we? kind of get moving towards the go fit, go, go fit, go for it, cycle one. How are we getting things lined up? And, you know, I don't mean to kill you with, you know, series of questions, but being a coach, I'm, like I said, that's kind of, you know, questions are important. Um, but you have your values, and so now you're looking at, okay, well, how are things currently lining up and to be able to, to check in with yourself, okay? So really, what is your intention and how does it line up? You need to create opportunities to be still, to be thinking about it, because I know, well, you know, we have to get the job, we need to pay the bills, we, you know, whatever the circumstances are. But there also is a lot of value to being still and thinking and considering and reflecting. Okay, Janine, right? Okay, she mentioned helpfulness. What am I tolerating that is counter my values? This is actually probably the most important bullet on the slide, I think. What people think, beliefs, identifications, is it time to let go of? And really being honest about that. Because these are the things that, that, that cause us to get misaligned. So, if I'm on the job, is it, is it you know, the processes, the procedures that are, that, that are going on? Is it somebody's behavior? Is it the expectation that is being placed on me, you know, that I'm going to, you know, support half the family? I don't know, I'm just making up stuff, right? Okay, but these are all things that distract us and have our you know, sleepless nights and cloud our minds and our hearts, okay? Because we are focused on these things. So another great exercise is to actually write down the things that you've, that, that you've been tolerating 
that you really need to let go of in order to allow you to be able to do the work and move towards what it is that you want to accomplish. So the tip, the, if there were two things I was going to take away, you know, is you know, is around where you are in the cycle, but also what are your values and what are you tolerating that is hindering what you want to get done. And then we talked about well, how, you know, how do we get it? How are we moving but with through several cycles and we get stuck and things of that nature. Um, the tolerations, the skills behaviors that we need to be that we need to that we need to enable for us to navigate through the, the, the phase who do you need to be who do we need to be if something's not working and we're showing up the same way all the time I went through this transformation workshop when I was trying to figure out what I was going to, what I wanted to do right <laughs> and I went through this transformation and one of the things that we wound up having to do out of it was uh, establish a contract for ourselves. And the contract um, was three words. And I came out of it with I'm open, authentic, and compassionate person. That was my contract to myself that I take in everything because I'm an introvert and I come from a predominantly female family and there's a lot of energy and a lot of smart people, and everybody talks at the same time, and all this kind of stuff, right? I was the person when I grew up, at, at Thanksgiving, I'd lay down in the, the middle of the living floor, just go to sleep, because I get overstimulated over pretty quick, right? Um, and so, out of that transformation workshop, I learned that I might not have been coming off as, as authentic as I could, with family and others, because it's just the introverted part of my personality, and I'm like, okay, whatever. And, and I was coming off indifferent. And that also was not gonna work if I was gonna be coaching people. Okay, so I made a commitment in terms of those three words, in terms of how I show up in space. Be more open, because I'm a very task-oriented person. I'm like, okay, so what's next? Okay, let's get it done, you know. I'm from New York, I'm quick moving, you know, all of that, okay? And so, you know, that, that caused me to, to step back. Because people talk about how they were perceiving me in this workshop. And I think I'm outgoing and I think I'm more. Okay, so that, so that was work I was doing, you know, for myself. And that's how I came out of that. So you really have to think about, you know, how you show up and the experience you want people to feel when they are engaging with you. There's 500 million people out there doing HR consulting. 500 million of them, right? So what's important for me is the relationships that I, in the, um, the relationships and the experiences that I create with individuals. That's what's important. And then of course, whatever the resources you think you're gonna need to realize whatever it is that you want to get accomplished. Okay, so again, just a series of things to consider as you, you know, want to come out of that, you know, cocooning and trying to go into getting ready to, to reset your vision for yourself. And so in summary, I guess the key takeaways here is that viewing transitions as opportunities for growth, making sure we stay connected with where we are, in the cycle, okay, and the need and the need for change, the core values, making sure we're clear about what our uh, our passions are, which are you know difficult to 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 do. So that's why it's in, it's very intentional, and how we're managing, you know, ourselves, and how we're organizing our life around really trying to make sure that we're focused on what we consider to be our sense um, of purpose, and so. That's what I have for today. What questions, comments? I had a question. I don't want to hog your time, but um, okay. when you talk about organizing your life around these, and a lot, you mentioned responsibility, and I know in my own case previously, 
it was responsibilities I had, you know, to the, the family and my partner. And I felt like it was selfish of me to um, try to disrupt that. And, and what about the income and the, mm -hmm. and the way we were living? Um, so as part of that, like trying to not get rid of those people, but get a different deal, get those responsibilities reallocated, and, and maybe take some of that load. Is that well? That's is an that interesting question because I see it. Yeah, because the part of that process is communication, from my perspective, right? Because um, we don't want people to think that we're necessarily unhappy. We want people to think that you know we we got it all together and we're managing it. Um, but we also need to be clear about making sure that we convey what our needs are too. Um, and so I think communication is key there and I mentioned about being an introvert and being kind of self-sufficient and all that kind of stuff and I had to speak up to my family and say I need help yeah you know with my mom I've said it people hear me talk about it it's not a secret you know it's not a secret I told folks you know this is how much it costs all of that right but as long as it was happening you know it was you know I was just like we're praying for you and we know it's hard Okay. No, seriously. Yeah. Okay. Until a couple months ago, I was like, y'all, I'm not be broke. Y'all need to do something. Okay. I'm serious. Okay. And at that point, they said, oh, yes, of course. You know, but that took a lot for me to do that. All right. And so, you know, we want, we need to trust the people in our lives that love us and support us, you know, and especially during difficult times. Um, because people will step up, but you have to ask them to step up and you have to convey what your particular needs are. That's my experience. Um, and you know, a lot of times it strengthens relationships as well. Does that answer your question yeah. a little bit? Okay. I think maybe for me, it was also just realizing I couldn't handle it all by myself. Yeah. I would have to ask for help and that was all. It is. It is always the hardest part, especially when people just know. You know, you you, you got it. You, yeah. you know. yeah. Right. So, no, seriously. I still okay, think the hardest part is when you ask and they still don't do it. Uh, right. <laughs> but yes. That's right. just me. But no, it is. It is. And I've been told. Well, I know you're probably frustrated because people have enough. And my response to that is, I ask, and however it's laid on people's hearts, I can't be responsible for that. I still got to do what I need to do, um, but but it doesn't mean that I I'm happy about it. But you can't control what other people do. So even if you put it out there, they don't do it. I mean, what are you gonna do? Yeah, and is that when you start unilaterally offloading some of the responsibility? Well, you yeah, or make it clear about what you're not gonna do. I mean, no, I'm serious. Okay, now we get into my personal okay. state. I'm just saying, you know, but they, no, but I'm serious. That's why I had my family members know not to expect some of the same stuff that they might have gotten from Sherry six years ago. They know that that's not going to happen. And I'm good with that. Because I'm clear about what I believe my purpose is. You know, so, um, yeah. Yeah, fairness. Yeah. <laughs> what you gonna do? Any other questions or comments? Was there anything else you want to talk about related to the Caregiving, or you good back there? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Anything else? I'm sorry. About the caregiving or whatever you wanted oh, to God. say? Are you good? Are you good <laughs> back there? <laughs> Let's just say, much to my surprise, three weeks ago I found myself in an ambulance in the hospital, going to the hospital. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying I'm kind of two, three, four, kind of moving back around. So yeah. You have these unexpected things that force you, do. you into transition sometimes. Yeah. So that's you, where, that's you, where I yeah, am. and then sometimes. Like when I got laid off, um, I realized that it actually was perfect timing because I would have never had the bandwidth to deal with my mother. I, w I would not have had the bandwidth because I was in an executive level job. You know, I knew things were going on, right? But I didn't have, you know, I wasn't able to really focus on it until it was opened up for me. So I always tell even young people in my family that I kind of coach because they're calling me Aunt Sherry, my job, my boss, whatever the circumstances are. Whatever situation that you're in, I believe that 
what we can do is just try to determine what it, what, what is it that I can get out of this situation. It may not be the ideal situation at the time, okay, but how is it going to serve you? You know, you still show up and you, and you operate in integrity and all of those kind of things, but really determine at this season in my life, what is it that I need and that I can get out of this? There's always something, you know, even though it might not be the perfect, you know, cycle that you wish to be in. I mean, you know, I'd rather be traveling the world right now, but that's not the cycle I'm in. <laughs> but that's my preference, you know. All right, I think it's time. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you very much.